Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining. Uh, while we wait for people to trickle in, I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to Opsgility. We are proud Microsoft partners and hold several gold and silver competencies in security, DevOps, data, and much more. We leverage this knowledge and experience to guide organizations along their digital transformation journey through our suite of solutions. First, we can work with your organization to identify skill gaps to create custom learning solutions with the scale and flexibility to meet your skilling needs. Next, we enable organizations to deliver engaging virtual events with one venue, our virtual and hybrid event platform. One venue is an end-to-end -end solution that's built on Microsoft Teams and gives event organizers the tools to create multi-day, multi-track events in minutes. Our team of producers can fully manage your event design, speaker rehearsal, and custom stream configuration to ensure a seamless delivery. Finally, as consultants, we can support your organization's IT infrastructures through custom solutions built with Microsoft's suite of products and services. Whether you're looking for guidance to select licenses, subscription management, IT project support, or access to a sandbox environment for dev tests. We got you covered. Thank you so much, Marquez. So hello and welcome to the Cybersecurity Certification Roadmap. We created this webinar to pro really provide a path for potential students to figure out how to start a career in cybersecurity. It could be transitioning into cybersecurity or even become an expert in cybersecurity. As you may have heard, cybersecurity is one of the most talked about job roles in the last five years, and there's many different options for getting started and also maintaining skill sets. The cybersecurity industry is constantly evolving and facing new challenges as technology advances and cyber threats become more sophisticated. Some of the key trends in the industry include the increasing use of artificial intelligence and also machine learning for threat detection and also prevention. The growing importance of cybersecurity in the Internet of Things and the increasing number of cyber attacks on businesses and also individuals. As more and more sensitive data is being generated and also stored online, the need for effective cybersecurity measures becomes even more crucial. My name is Brian Nielsen. I'm actually the lead training architect for OpsGility.com. I've been in IT for over 26 years, spent 11 years in consulting, and I've been heavily involved with security on all levels for various clients throughout the years. I do have my LinkedIn profile down at the bottom and also my email. So if you have any additional questions you want to send me personally, or if you just want to reach out and connect, go ahead and do that. So we're going to start with just a general overview of the cybersecurity industry and also look at the current trends and issues. I want to look at the requirements for the different types of cybersecurity jobs that are available. Then we're going to take a look at the different experience levels in cybersecurity. And finally, we're going to go over the different learning paths that we have available for you so you can start your dream career in cybersecurity. If you're concerned that you're potentially entering a market that has already peaked or has limited demand, understand that the global cybersecurity addressable market may reach $1.5 to $2 trillion. It's going to be 10 times the vended market. What this chart gives you is a breakdown of all the different segments that are available inside of cybersecurity. So if you're worried that an existing skill set like network or identity access management that your skill might not transfer over, do not worry. Cybersecurity touches every facet of the IT environment. So whether you have zero skills or an expert, there's absolutely a place for you in cybersecurity. If you look in the very last column, you can see that there is a massive opportunity for all of these segments. Starting at the top, you can see in data protection, the current penetration in this market is only 30 to 35%. If you dip down board lines, you can see cloud security is one to 5%. This is a very, very infantile market and there's a lot of growth potential. Let's take a look at the cost of cybersecurity. It is getting exponentially higher and higher and higher. This chart is actually in the trillions of dollars. As more and more services are available, the potential impact of a cybersecurity event also gets larger. For fiscal year 2022, we're looking at an estimated cost of $8 trillion. This includes events such as data breaches. A data breach is when an attacker gains unauthorized access to a company's computer system and is able to steal sensitive information. It could be computer, customer data, or even financial information. This could be extremely costly for the company both in terms of financial loss resulting from the stolen data, but also in damage to the company's reputation. In addition to the direct costs, companies also may be required to pay legal fees, regulatory fines, and other costs associated with the breach. Another type of cybersecurity event that can cost companies money is ransomware attack. In a ransomware attack, an attacker encrypts a company's data and demands a payment in exchange for the decryption key. If the company does not pay that ransom, the attacker may release the encrypted data publicly or sell it to other attackers. This can be costly for the company, both in terms of the ransom payment and in loss of the encrypted data. Another type of cybersecurity event that can cost companies money is a distributed denial of service attack, or DDoS. 
in this DDoS attack. An attacker uses a network of infected computers to flood a company's website or network with traffic, making it inaccessible for legitimate users. This can be extremely costly for a company, both in terms of lost revenue and also the cost of mitigating the attack. Additionally, a DDoS attack can damage a company's reputation and potentially lead to legal liabilities. This is around the global cybersecurity market. This is really expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate. We call it CAGR. This is at 12% from 2022 to 2030. The growth is driven by factors such as the increasing number of cyber attacks, growth of e-commerce platforms, the deployment of cloud solutions, and also the proliferation of smart devices. As cyber threats continue to evolve, organizations are expected to adopt advanced cybersecurity solutions to detect and also mitigate the risk of attack, driving further growth in the side of this market. Currently, the global cybersecurity market size in 2021 was 184 billion. Here you can see the North American cybersecurity market size in millions compared to 2016 versus the expectations for 2026. The North American cybersecurity market share exceeded 70 billion in 2019 and is expected to register a lucrative growth from 2020 to 2026 at a CAGR of 7%. The large enterprise segment is projected to account for a major share of over 55% in the North American market by 2026 due to the large scale financial impact of cybersecurity attacks, increasing the budget allocations for cybersecurity systems and sustained increase in employee negligence inside organizations. According to the 2018 report on malicious cyber activity published by the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors, the cost of a cyber attack for a large U.S. enterprise that has a market cap over 15 billion was more than $21 million per event. This increasing pressure to mitigate financial losses and also maintain investor trust is going to further drive large enterprises towards the adoption of cybersecurity solutions. According to the latest Fortune Business Insights report, the global security market is projected to grow from $155 billion in 2022 to $376 billion by 2029, exhibiting a compound annual growth rate of 13.4% in such period. It is surely a tremendous market with great opportunity. The landscape to get involved in cybersecurity has been changing a lot, and I hope to dispel some of the rumors. The first rumor that you might hear is it's going to require a college degree, and spe a, specifically a college degree in cybersecurity or even information technology. To answer that, simply no. You do not need a degree to get into cybersecurity. There's a tremendous amount of training you can utilize to advance your career. And I'll cover some of this later in the webinar. Next is that you have to be a programmer to be in cybersecurity. The, key and the short answer is going to be no. You do not have to be a programmer to be in cybersecurity. So eliminate the pictures in your head of seeing the hackers in movies and TV. There are a lot of different roles available inside of cybersecurity. You do not need to be a programmer. The next question is, do I have to be good at computers? Again, the short answer for this is going to be no. There's a lot of alternate fields like law, compliance, and government that can help you get into cybersecurity. Understanding the correct processes and protocols can help you get into the cybersecurity industry. These industries bring a wealth of experience and an entirely new perspective on how to protect businesses and also consumer data. And also, is it too late to get into cybersecurity? Again, for this, the answer is absolutely no. Since 2019, there's been a massive shortfall of available personnel with cybersecurity experience and training. The top 11 companies worldwide currently face a collective talent gap of 4.7 million jobs. To meet that need, the global workforce in cybersecurity will need to increase by 145%. So I've broken up experience levels into five different segments, starting with a new career or transition with zero to one years of experience, then a junior with one to two years of experience, intermediate with two to three years of experience, and advanced at three to four years, and finally expert level that can potentially be five plus more years of experience. Let's go over some of the potential job titles you will see based on experience. With a new career transition, it can be an IT network admin, systems engineer, security analyst, a database administrator, you can be a SOC analyst, and also working around managing IT operations. Next at your junior level, this is when you're actually going into more of a cybersecurity. It could be an analyst, a specialist, working around intrusion detection, or even doing auditing. Again, you do not have to be a computer expert inside these roles. At an intermediate level, also looking at being an analyst or a consultant, or actually working around penetration testing or working on a white hat team. At your advanced level, this is 
when you can actually start applying security to being a developer, working inside different management levels for security, for app dev, dev ops, also working as an architect or an engineer. And finally, at the expert level, this is when you're starting to look at engineers, architects, whether you want to be a consultant, you're looking at the ability to get into C-level parts of the organization or different types of levels of architecture, whether it's from the cloud or enterprise architecture. Let's take a look at what CompTIA has to offer. So staying with the, the seg segments for experiences, let's take a look at the IT certifications that are available for starting your cybersecurity career around CompTIA. Starting at the far left, we've got A+, which is going to be, give you your core foundation if you really want to get into a good career and start really fast. A+, is a great place to start. Next, we got ITF, which is going to be IT fundamentals. Then we go into Network+, Plus, which will give you a very strong understanding of networking. You do want, If you want to pay attention that when you move into Network Plus and Security Plus, it is going to require more experience, and I'll cover this a little bit more later, but just understand as you're progressing through this, CompTIA is going to validate that you do have a certain level of experience before you can actually move forward in these. Security Plus is really, when you first get started inside of security, they are looking for about two years worth of experience and hands-on experience inside of security. Pentress is actually where you can actually get experience and training around penetration testing. So if you want to get your hands on with that, it's a great place to get into. For CISA, this is going to be your cybersecurity analyst. And the last one is the CAS Plus, and an advanced security practitioner. That's one of their most advanced certifications that they do offer. Starting with the IT fundamentals, this is really actually an amazing place to start. So if you've ever said, I'm not a computer person, this is actually the perfect certification to truly understand computers. I highly suggest this to organizations as a baseline for staff because it's gonna eliminate so many different computer issues because everyone will have a strong foundation in computers. Having this foundational knowledge in your organization is actually going to eliminate many tickets because your staff is gonna be able to help themselves. It really provides a great foundation. Next is A+. This is like I was saying before, this is a great place to launch your IT career. The A plus actually appears in more tech support jobs than any other IT credential. Some different types of careers you can look for inside here. You can jump right into being a help desk technician, desktop support specialist, field service technician, associate network engineer, junior systems administrator, or even a support technician. On Network Plus, it's completely vendor neutral. It is globally recognized and it's a key destination for any type of IT professionalist just getting started. It's gonna validate your network administration skills and also help advance your career in whatever path you choose. You can see some of the different roles available inside here. We add in the network analyst, network support specialist, or even a system engineer. When you get into Security Plus, as I was mentioning before, it is gonna require two years of experience, but it's really designed around people that actually are truly getting into cybersecurity then it's not going to be the first thing that you're going to do. You do need to have some experience before you get into security. Some of the roles around here, we've got security administrator, system administrator. You can also start adding in the IT auditors or IT project managers and going into a lot more experienced roles. The pen test is really sometimes re referred to as ethical hackers. I mentioned before, white hack. Actually, I have a neighbor that is a white hack, works in a white hacked group inside of Costco. And that's actually something they do on a daily basis is they do penetration system testing against their organization. So it's continually probing your organization's security defenses to identify, close any vulnerabilities before cyber criminals can actually exploit them. As you can see in this inside here, it is going to require three to four years of experience, but the roles change dramatically. So now you're looking into security consultant, a cloud penetration tester, a web application penetration tester, or a cloud security specialist, or even a network and security specialist. When you start moving up the ladder to cybersecurity analyst or CISA, this is when you really decided you want to get into a cybersecurity as a career. CISA is going to be an incredible option for you. It's really around that intermediate level. It's going to give you, give you a step above and beyond the Security Plus certification. As you can see inside here, you, some of the roles we've got threat hunter, compliance analyst, cybersecurity analyst, security engineer, but you are looking at at least four years of experience inside here. Moving up the top, 
for what's available inside of CompTIA. We've got our CASP Plus, which is our advanced security practitioner. Inside here, we're looking for 10 years of experience, five years of security experience. But at this level, you're actually truly becoming a lead engineer in the organization. You're looking for how it's going to apply to different environments. It could be a traditional data center, cloud, or even a hybrid. You should have knowledge of governance, risk, also compliance requirements, and to properly assess an enterprise's cybersecurity readiness and the ability of a professional to lead technical teams and implement cybersecurity solutions inside the organization. Let's move into ISC squared. So here's the same segments with the ISC squared certifications. As you can see, ISC squared covers the extremes from a foundation to expert level. ISC squared is definitely the standard for cybersecurity certifications. Starting on the left, we've got CC. It's going to be the Certified in Cybersecurity Certification. This is really around demonstrating to employees that they have the foundational knowledge, skills, and also the abilities necessary for an entry level cybersecurity role. The next one we're talking about is CAP. So this is a Certified Authorization Professional Certification. This is actually really good if you want to work in IT security or work for a federal government or United States military in some capacity. Next, we've got SSCP. This is a System Security Certified Practitioner. This is really good if you have, want a position to oversee the security of an organization's networks and also their systems. Next, we've got HCISPP. This is the Health Information Security and Privacy Practitioner, specifically for security professionals who work in a healthcare field and are responsible for making sure all the patient's health information remains protected. Next, we've got CSSLP. This is a certified secure law software lifecycle professional. It's for software developers that want to put an emphasis on security so they can ensure an organization's software is going to be secure. Their most popular one that most people know about and is, has a lot of buzz around it right now is CISP. CISSP. This certification is really around people who have at least five years of experience in the field who, or who worked as managers and executive inside of information technology or even cybersecurity. A professional who earns the CISSP has knowledge in security and risk management, asset security, security architecture, and also engineering, communication, network security, security operations, among others. It's a very, very thorough certification. And finally, we've got CCSP. This is a certified information systems security professional. So if you want to work in the cloud security and the architecture and operations that come with it, the CCSP shows you have advanced technical skills and knowledge to design, manage, and secure data, applications, infrastructure in the cloud, utilizing best practices, policies, procedures that are established by cybersecurity experts. Let's take a look at the CC certification. This actually requires no cybersecurity work experience at all. It's going to be the next step in a candidate's career that they want to start driving towards expert level certifications as they do develop experience in the field. As I said, this truly is entry level, so you can get a lot of junior code penetration testing. You could be an auditor, technician, analyst, IT auditor. A lot of different job opportunities are available with the certification. Next, we've got the System Security, security Certified Practitioner. This is really around a hands-on practitioner who continually monitors information systems to safeguard against security threats while having the knowledge to apply security concepts, tools, and procedures to react to security incidents. One of the differences that you should note about this particular certification is it does not focus on cloud technologies. So understand there's still massive amounts of equipment and data that has not been migrated to the cloud. It does touch on cloud, so it doesn't completely eliminate. Just understand it isn't one of the core principles this particular certification, and it does require some experience. Next, we've got the Certified authorization, authorization Professional. This is truly essential for professionals dealing with risk assessments, system security posture, authorization of information, systems within the NIST risk management framework. Inside here, you could be an information security officer, senior system manager, consultant, admin, IT or information security professional who actually utilizes RMF, or anyone to look to learn more about the NIST-based information-based security authorization processes. The HCISPP, this is great for solidifying the frontline defense against malicious attacks to protect against sensitive healthcare information. You want to demonstrate proactive commitment to the organization to minimize the risk of data breaches with this role. 
They also want to increase the confidence of patients and also those within the organization. They are actually going to be assisting by mitigating risk through the exchange of protected health information or PHI and also with third parties that em employ these HC ISPPs. And finally, they want to increase the organization's credibility, credibility while working with different vendors and also different clients. With a certified secure software lifecycle professional, it's really about validating the candidate's skill and knowledge necessary for authentication, authorization, and auditing throughout the entire SDLC lifecycle. Includes the best practices, policies, and also procedures. And again, with this one, you're looking at about three plus years of experience, and the roles tend to be more around development. The most popular one is going to be your CISSP, and the job responsibilities of the CISSP include ensuring that all the private data about the business, staff, consumers remain non-public. The CISP is going to outline security guidelines for consumers, define possible risks, implement applications, apply security policies, and also track networks. They can also analyze programs to detect possible security vulnerabilities, recommend changes to change vulnerabilities, introduce modifications, and also document all these improvements. You'll notice a drastic change in the type of roles around CISP. So you're looking at management level, you're looking at the DSO, you're looking at architects and engineers. A tremendous amount of experience and background comes into this role, and you're looking at about five years of experience before you can even take this particular exam. Next is going to be the CCSP, Certified Information Security Professional. These are actually going to be people that rel create reliable, scalable, and also secure data driven processes and automation to manage the lifecycle of cloud services. They're going to perform management and implement cloud application architecture and also cloud design. They play an integral role in protecting an organization's data, analyzing existing cloud structures, and creating new and enhanced security methods. These professionals are actually indispensable for de devising the proper implementation strategy when an organization decides on cloud adoption. They develop the architecture of the cloud, assess the needs, evaluate possible providers, identify talents needed to manage the system once implemented, and also oversee the governance and security implications. Again, you can see the vast difference in the type of job titles that are available inside here, starting with the five years of experience, your architect level, your C level, you're at enterprise architect, you're really high in the organization at this point. Next, let's take a look at the certifications around Microsoft, starting with the same segments we had before. Starting on the far left, we're going to start with the SC900 if you want to establish a strong foundation inside Azure Cloud with an understanding of security. So we've got the SC900 for security compliance and identity fundamentals. Then we move into the AZ500, which is the Azure Security Engineer Associate. Then we've got the MS500, which is the Microsoft 365 Security Administrator. The SC200, which is the Security Operations Analyst. SC300, which is Identity and Access Administrator Associate. SC400 is Administrator Information Protection Administrator. And finally, at the far end, we've got SC100, which is our cybersecurity architect, and this is at expert level. One of the unique things about the Microsoft certification, it really does not have any time base to it. So if you want to pass all of these in one year, you're more than welcome to. It might be very overwhelming to do, but you do have the capacity to do that. There's several of these that do have previous certifications that are required before you can move forward. If you do have any questions about that, just send me an email or send me a Q&A at the end. The security compliance and identity fundamental certification are really for people to familiarize themselves with the fundamentals of SCI across cloud-based and also related Microsoft services. It's really developed for a broad audience that may include business stakeholders, students starting out in IT, or even existing IT pros that have an interest in Microsoft security solutions. The AZ500 is really a certification for Azure security engineers or even IT administrators that want to focus on security. This role is around Azure security controls that protect identity, access, data, applications, network in the cloud, and also hybrid environments. This is also part of an end-to-end -end infrastructure. Some of the responsibilities as an Azure security engineer could be man managing the security posture, identifying and remediating vulnerabilities, performing threat modeling, implementing threat protection, and also responding to security incident, incident escalations. People that achieve the MS500 certification really about managing, monitoring, security, and implement compliance solutions inside of Microsoft 365 and also hybrid environments. It's for people with a strong identity protection, information protection, threat protection, security management, and also data governance. 
The SC200 certification is really about demonstrating knowledge of threat mitigation, utilizing solutions that are work well for doing proactive threat hunting. This can be Microsoft 365 Defender, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and also Microsoft Sentinel. The SC300 is designed for identity roles, so you can prove core knowledge of identity governance principles as well as ensure a proper identity lifecycle. Some of the tools you'd be using inside here is Azure Active Directory, Azure AD Connect, Multi-Factor Authentication or MFA. We've got Privilege Identity Management or PIM. There's Conditional Access and also Identity Governance. At the SC400, that's Information Protection Administrator. It's going to plan and implement controls that meet organization compliance guidelines. They're responsible for translating requirements and also compliance controls into technical implementation and assist organization owners to become and also stay compliant. At the top level, we've got our SC100, which is our expert level. Our, this kind of level you're looking at becoming a cybersecurity architect. They're going to be designing zero trust strategies and architecture, including secure strategies for data, application, access management, identity, and also infrastructure. The cybersecurity architect also generates government risk compliance or GRC strategies and also security operation strategies. The SC100 exam is really around people that have extensive experience with Microsoft PaaS, IaaS, and also hybrid environments. We covered these segments at the beginning, but I want to make special note of the last three segments. The last three can be more focused on management skills. And additionally, these do not necessarily require strong programming skills or even strong computer skills. There's a tremendous need for people to define protocols in an organization, manage people, manage processes. All of these IT certifications, you do not have to be an extreme computer expert or programmer to be exceptionally valued in a cybersecurity organization. So I just want to give you a quick example of what it could possibly exist for a cybersecurity organization. As you can see at the very bottom, we've got our technical people. So these are going to be the people actually dealing with existing threats, resolving issues and those kind of situations. But we've got a lot of different management, leadership and executives that are above that. And they actually have to define the policies and put things in place. Let's say that there is a particular incident. I know the state of California, if there is a cybersecurity incident, you have four days to actually notify the state about that. So there's press releases that need to happen. There's all kinds of documents that need, need to be generated. All these things are above and beyond what IT people would actually be working on. So there's, do you not have to necessarily be a, a IT expert inside of cybersecurity? So as an overview, we went over the state of the cybersecurity and the industry, went over the requirements, also the different experience levels, and also went through several of the learning paths that are available out there. I do want to thank you for attending. And if you do have any questions, go ahead and you can put those out and I'll take a look at them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. So what's the next step? Uh, once the webinar concludes, a member of our team will contact you via email to share a link to the webinar recording, as well as links to our scheduled security courses. Uh, these courses are open to any individual that are interested in getting certified. And if you want to train your team, uh, you can reach us via email, phone, social media, or live chat on our website uh, to schedule a dedicated course or hackathon. A member of our team will be happy to meet with you to help determine which certifications and services can best serve your organization. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining.